We are starting a new page, a new Mesechet, a new Da. Says the Mishnah, Arba'a Avot Nezikim. When we're talking about damages, remember we're starting Seder Nezikim. Seder Nezikim is the entire Seder of Mishnayot, which have to do with damages. So that's why the majority of Choshen Mishpat, which is money matters, has to do with these Masechtot, whether it's going to be Baba Makama, Baba Metzia, Baba Batra, all these things that have to do with damages, whether it's going to be with all these things. So here we're talking about there are four major categories of damages. That's the explanation of Arba Avot Nezikim. Remember that whenever there's Avot, there's obviously Toladot. Whenever, whenever there's the categories, there's the subcategories. Remember that here there's going to be four characteristics and then everything will go into these four. So number one, Hashor, the ox. Number two, Abor, the pit. Number three, Hamav'eh, which we're going to have to see exactly what is the Mav'eh, because the Gemara is going to explain that. And Ha'hever, Hever is, right, Tavera, you know, Kibarab Esh, right? It's Esh, fire. So we're going to come and we're going to say there are four categories of damages, okay? Arba Avot Nezikin. Now, technically, it should have been written Mazikin and not Nezikin, but that's very, very beyond already, right? Because Mazikin are the ones that are doing the damages. Nezikin are the ones that are receiving the damages. But again, that's just the way the Mishnah is doing it. There's a Shittah Mekubetzit on that, but that you can do for further you. Says the Mishnah, Lo Hare Hashor Kare Mave, Ve Lo Hare Mave Kare Hashor, which means the shor, which is the ox, is not like the mav'e. And the mav'e is not like the shor, which means they do not have the same, they do not their share the same characteristics. Velo zeveze, and neither the shor or the mav'e, sheesh ba'em ruach hayim, that they do have a ruach hayim, which means the shor is an ox, it's a living creature. The mav'e, we're going to see, is also a living creature, according to what I'm putting in the Gemara, it's a dam, right? It's a human being. A human being is the mav'e, okay? So, but, but they have ruach hayim, right? A fire... It's not a Ruach Haim. A fire is an inanimate object. I'm saying obviously it has oxygen to continue, but if you take away the oxygen, it dies out. But it's not a living uh, uh, concept. A boar is an inanimate object, right? There's no life to a boar. A boar is a pit. There's no life to a pit, okay? But the loze vezeh, that means both of them, the shore and the mave, that's why we put them together, the shore of the mave, right? He says the shore is not like the mave and the mave is not like the shore. Right, but each one they have ruach hayim, not like the esh shem ruach hayim. The lo zevazeh. Now again, you you could go and be yun, but by the way, you should know in yeshivot we learn this and we you know dissect every single part. So you could already right now say, why are we only saying that the only thing that doesn't have ruach hayim is the esh? Also, the board doesn't have ruach hayim, but it doesn't mention it. And then you know again in yeshivot they go very you know babakama b'metzia babatra all these types of mesechtot they go very very deep right into to understanding it. The lo zevazeh. Now, did you realize each of these three things, their common denominator is to go and to damage, right? But the board is immovable, meaning the fire travels to damage, right? The human being, if that's the explanation of Mavet, travels to damage, right? The shore travels to damage. The only one that does not travel to damage and just stays, how did you say it in English? Uh, passive, immobile. Immobile, passive. Yeah, they just basically, they stay in the same place and that's how they're doing them. Maybe they can't move anyway, Right? So in such a case, who's that? Says, but if we're going to come and we're going to say common denominator between all of the mazikim, common denominator is, right? It's normal to damage, right? And you're obligated to watch over them. Meaning you have the honest obligation to come and to watch over, right, these things. Now, if it does do damages, doesn't matter which one of these four. So then the mazik, which is damager, he has to pay the different damages with the best of the land. Okay, that's a mishnah. Very, very good. Okay, fine. Let's go. Excuse me. What does it mean? Says the Gimara, from the fact that we taught Avot, if you're going to tell me that there's an Av, there's obviously a Toladai, you cannot say that there's a rule without an exception to the rule. Okay, there has to be, if there's an Av, there's a Toladai. You cannot call somebody a father if he doesn't have a child. Right, it's just very simple. That's just mathematics, okay? So, Midiktani Avot, Miklal Deika Toladot, Toledotehen Kayotzebahen, or love Kayotzebahen. So now, the Toladot, 
which are basically the children, right? Or the subcategories. Are they like the father categories or not? So we're going to try to analyze because what exactly, right? You know, what does that mean? What's the question? You know, obviously, if I'm asking the question, there has to be something behind the question. So what's behind the question? Gabay Shabbat Tanan, by Shabbat it's written, Avot Melachot Arbeim Chaserecha. We know that the 39 Melachot, right? There's 40 Melachot, sorry, minus one, which means there's 39 Melachot. Okay, that's what we know. There's 39 Melachot. Avot, Mikal Ditel Katolodot. The same thing happens by there. We we already said that there's 39 Av Melachot. Obviously, there's Toladot. So, the same thing, Toladot credit to my hand, right? Or obviously, the Avot of Melachot of Shabbat Toladot are just like them. So, the Gemara says, why? Loshna Av Chatat, Veloshna Toladah Chatat. Loshna Av Sekila, Loshna Toladah Sekila. Meaning like this if right now somebody comes on Shabbat and he's over on the Av Melacha, yeah? For example, Choresh. Choresh means he comes and he's plowing a field. Or he's going to be over, or over he's going to transgress the tolada. What is to, tolada? Mashve gumot. I'm filling in the holes. So I'm not really plowing, but I'm going around and I'm filling in a hole. There's a hole and I fill it in. So therefore, one's an av and one's a tolada. If I did it bishogeg, there's no difference whether it's an av or tolada. I have to bring a korban chatat. Remember, on Yilchot Shabbat, Right? If you desecrate the shogeg, it's always a korban chatat, a sin offering. Okay? Now, chas so if a person does it, it, if a person comes and mm-hmm. does it, b'mezid, so he gets a kila. Oh, so I don't okay. care whether, right? Uh, again, it's not only b'mezid, it's b'mezid batra. They always need warning as well. Yeah. Right? But it's b'mezid. If a person did it will, willingly, intentionally, plus there was warnings, right? So therefore, what happens? He gets a kila. I don't care whether it's an av or a tolada. So the Gemara is going to ask, one second then, one second. If you're going to tell me this exact same thing, so then why is one an av and one's a tolada? Yeah, yeah. It's exact same rules. Meaning, if I'm going to have these are the rules and they're the exact same, so why, why do I have a different category? It's all the same thing. Answer the gimana nafkamina. There is a nafkamina. You know what the nafkamina is? The practical difference between them. Im right nafkamina diilu avad shte avod badi adadi inami shte toladot badi adadi mechayev kol achada vachada. He comes and he says this. If I'm going to do right now two avot melachot on Shabbat, whether it's going to be zorea the kotzer, planting and reaping, whether it's going to any, you guys choose whichever you want. But you have two avot melachot. I came and I did two avot melachot. I'm going to be chayav what? <laughs> two different chatats or two different skilas because you did two counts. There are two separate counts, right? That you went and you did, you were vera vera. The same thing happens with the tolada. Let's say a person did a toladav choresh or a toladav zorea. So in that case, it's the exact same thing. You're going to be chayav on two different counts, even though they're both toladot. So then one second. So how do we have a case where there's going to be a difference in an av and a tolada? The av and tolada, but the same category. Meaning, for example, I plowed, and at the same time that I plowed, I was much regumot. I came and I, I filled in a hole. So now, since I'm doing the same category, then I'm only going to be chayav chatat once, or I'm going to be chayav sekila chashlo once. It's not going to be two separate because basically what's yeah, happening is it's like two separate point. counts yeah. or one count, but just one is like a, a little bit stricter and one is, a, but a, a same thing. So that's what the Gemara says. So the Gemara says one more time, right? That you have one minute, right? He comes and he says, so therefore what's happening? You have, there's no difference between a tolada and an av. The only difference between them is going to be that if you're going to come and you're going to do different avot or different toladot, you're going to be chayav on every single one separately. It's a different count. There's 39 that you could be over. So I'm going to count. Count one. And number seven, you did number four and number 13. And he did number 20 and uh, 32. Very good. But now, and the same thing with the tolada, you were the subcategory six and subcategory 12, uh, subcategory 22, subcategory 39. But now, if I'm going to go, right, either, right, on the av and the tolada, so I'm going to do number six and the tolada of six, right? I'm going to do borer and I'm going to do tolada of borer. In such a case, since they're both the number six, I didn't care that one was the category, the av or the tolada. I only got one punishment. That's what the Gemara says. Okay, that's what the Gemara says. Okay. That says the Gemara. And according to Rabbi Yezer, the mechayev atolada bimkom av, amai kari le av, the amai kari la tolada. 
there is one shita, mm-hmm. that that shita is the shita of Rabbi Yezer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And according to shita of Rabbi Yezer, if you did both of them together, you're going to be chayav on the tolada, right? That means basically he's going to be mechayev shte chataot on an on a melacha, which you did an av and a tolada. And one more time, there's a rabbi. The rabbi's name is Rabbi Yezer. This Rabbi Yezer holds, you do get two different counts. So a number six on the avot melachot, you did the category and subcategory, two different of it. Well, if it's shogeg, you're going to get Well, if it's shogeg, you're going to get chatat. If it's mezid, sekila, but there's no difference. Basically, he's saying that you do are all are obligated on two separate ones. So according to the shita, so so why is it called an av in a tolada? For what? Why Why did you decide that one is an av and one is a tolada? Right? Why? At the end of the day, you're going to be chayav on both of them. So answers the gemara very simple. Hachtava b'mishkan chashiva so kari le'av. The one which is chashuv in the building of the mishkan, that's called an av. The hachtelo b'mishkan chashiva kari le'av. And the one that's not written in the mishkan, which means it was not chashuv in the building of the mishkan, that's called the tolada. Meaning it was in like the importance. So therefore, if you're going to ask me now, you're right, punishments, according to Rabbi Yezer, you're going to get both. Meaning it's the exact same as an av and a to- They're all different counts. So then why in the world is one called an av and one is called a tolada? And the answer is very, very simple. Because it has to do with importance. Meaning, I'm going to say, this is chashuv. So this is an av. A subcategory of that was not that chashuv in the mishkan. It's a tolada. You're right. If you're going to be over on both, you get two shots, as if to say. You get two X's. You get two punishments. You get... That, yeah, according to Rabbi But what's important in the Mishkan is an Av. What's not important in the Mishkan, Tolada. Fine. So we finish with Shabbat now. So one more time. We had Shabbat Avot, Toladot. Mm-hmm. We wanted to find out that they're the exact same. That was the concept of Toladot. Which means that the Toladot, the subcategories, was just like the mm-hmm. categories. We asked them, why do you have different cases? So according to the first Shittah, the different cases was going to tell you about the punishment. That if you do two different Av Melachot or two different Toladot, they have separate punishments. Right? But if you do an Avin and it's one punishment. According to Rabbi Yezer, that he does say that you get two punishments. So according to him, why do you have the Avin and Tolada? He says, no, according to him, very simple. Whatever's in the Mishkan, it's an Av, Chashuv in the Mishkan, obviously. Whatever's not Chashuv in the Mishkan, Tolada. Let's go to the next case. Next case is Tumot. By Tumot, we find in the Mishnah Kelim, Avot Tumot. We know that there's a concept called Avatumah. Right? So what's Avot Tumot? Hasheretz. Shikhvadzera, creepy crawler. Now remember that when we always talk about creepy crawler, right, they're the ones which are written mefurash in Parashat Shemini, which means it's not every single creepy crawler, right? There are certain creepy crawlers that those are the ones which are Tameh. What do we say that was not a creepy crawler? We Tzfardea, just Tzfardea. Tzfardea. No, Tzab was. Tzfardea was not, even though the Tzab was Dome, ah. but the Tzfardea was not. So that means you could have a frog and a Tzab, whatever that is exactly. So the Tzab was one of the eight creepy crawlers, right? One of the Shimon Shatim, but not the Tzfardea. So that's what we said. If you remember, then the Kiddushin, we just said, what happens if you have a pile and you have the Tzfardea beside it and Shar Shatim because they're not the same. Even though they're similar. No, 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 no. One's a Tzfardea, one's a Tzav. Sure. So now, the Shmon Shatim, that's called an Av Tuma. Av Tuma. Any one of the Shmon Shatim. Number two, Sheikh Zera. Semen. <coughs> Semen is called an Av. Bet Amubet. To be. It's either to be or you're not going to be. Yeah, to be or not to be. So he says like this. Utmemet. What about somebody that's Tmemet? Why? Because the met is a via vota tuma, and the ava tuma is something that's tmebet by touching or anything like that. So he comes and says, Yes, toledotehen love for you today. Do you know that the tolada is not right like it? Right? The tolada is not like the av. So, one more time, by tumot, we brought down three avot shratzim, shikh vadzera, tmebet. Not the met, because the met is a via vota tuma. He's a step above. We're talking about a vototuma. So a vototuma you have. Shratzim, shmona shratzim, right? Do you have the, so. the sheikh vadzera and tmemet, somebody that touched the met. So he's already the secondary. He's klisheni. Okay? Is Fine. Yeah. We're a vot. We're in the vot. But mi shenagabo is the secondary. We're not a vot. Mi shenagabo who a vot. No, but met. No, no, the, the, the met is a via vota tuma. Yeah. The person that touches the met is called avatum. Okay, so therefore, what happens? What does it mean? He comes and he says that toledot are not like them. 
Meaning, did you guys realize, we just said that by Shabbat, the Tolada is like the Av. By now, by Avot Tumah, of uh, Tumah, right? It's Tolada is not like the Av. Toladatem love kayot ben. Why? The ilu av metame adam the kelim. An av atuma is metame adam the kelim. But the toladot are only going to be metame. Ochli nu mashkin metame adam the kelim lo metame. Which means like this: If you guys remember, an adam the kelim can only become a rishon letuma. It cannot become afterwards. The buck stops here. It stops there, right? Ochli nu mashkin can become a asheni. And if it becomes Tuma, it could become a Shlishi. And if it's Kodesh, it could become Revi'i. But again, they're always Ochli Mumashkin. It can never be Adam Vekilim. Okay? So now, what happens is as follows. You have an Av Hatuma. The Av Hatuma can be Metame Adam Vekilim. But a Tolada of the Tuma cannot be Metame Adam Vekilim. It can only Metame Ochli Mumashkin. So therefore, over here, Right? Toledotem, love Kayotzeben. So therefore, he comes and he says like this. He comes and he says, oh, sorry, he comes and he says like this. He comes and he says, so therefore, the question that we're going to have now is goes as follows. The question that we have now is, what is the halacha by Baba Kama? Right? What is the halacha by Baba Kama? Right? What does that mean by Baba Kama? And we just had a vote nezikim. Yeah? We just had a vote nezikim. So you have avot, toladot. Avot, toladot. Remember, one more time, let's zoom out. Avot, nezikin. That's how we started. Arba avot, nezikin. So there are avot, nezikin. Where else do we find avot? Avot by Shabbat. Avot, melachot. Where else do we find avot? By Tum'ah. So therefore, the Gemara is going to say one second. Are the toladot of nezikin like the avot or not? Why? Let's look at Shabbat. The toladot of Shabbat are like the avot of the Shabbat. So it's the same thing. They're like them. They're very similar. But when I come to Tum'ah, the Toladot are not similar to the Avot. So the Gemara now asks, what about Bayas? Avot is the king. Are the Toladot like the Avot or not? And that's why I told you when we started the Gemara, the Gemara says, Militani Avot, right? Mikaldika Toladot. Toladot, what's the Gemara asking? Why is the Gemara asking, are the Toladot like the fathers, right, or not? Obviously, it's true. No, 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 no. One second. You find Shabbat, that they are, but then you find Tum'ah, that they're not. So what are we by Avot Nezikin? Is the Toledot like the Avot or not? That's what the Gemara asks. Where's the Gemara? Amar Rav Papa says, Rav Papa, Yesh ma'en ka yotze bahen, Yesh ma'en lav ka yotze bahen. Do you know what Nezikin is? Nezikin is actually what? A compromise. Sometimes they are Dome, and sometimes they're not Dome. Meaning, one more time, we had Shabbat. Shabbat was Domeh. We had Avot Tumah. Now we have Nezikim. What is Nezikim? Answers of Papa. Some here and some there. Yes, yes. Some of them are the same. Some of them are not the same. Okay? And that's how he finishes. Very good. Now, the truth is, though, he didn't say which ones. Right? So now we're going to try to understand. Meaning, Rav Papa left it at that. Sometimes you ask a question and they're going to answer you. But they're not going to give you all the details. So if you want to know now what are all the toladot of, uh, of Tumah, go look it up. He's not going to give it to you. Here, Rav Papa, he didn't answer you. Rav Papa just told you, yesh, liyesh. Yeah? Yesh, liyesh. That's it. So now says the Gimana. Right? Tan Rabbanan. Right? We learned in Abraita. Shlosha avot ne'emru. Right? There's going to be three avot nezikin, which are brought under the Torah, to do with the shore. Hakeren v'ashen Regal. Look at the look at the at the beauty. You have an ox, but in the ox you have three different ways of how does the ox damage. The act the ox damages with his horns. That's the keren. He damages with his teeth when he eats, right? And he damages with the regal well, when he, he kicks bites, things, or he bites, or whatever. And he damages well, with the regal, walk right? The right? Walking, walking the kicking, the right? Regal. Well, that's regal. Yeah. Very good. So therefore, right now the Gemara is going to come and speak about. The entire concept of the Mekor, where do you see this in the Torah? Right? Where do you see in the Torah that there's three different places? Right? That means when I'm going to ask you, the shore, what are you going to tell me? I'm going to tell me three different things. So he says, Kerem and Allah. How do we know about the Kerem, about the horn? The Torah of Adam, we learned in a Braita, right? That when it says in the Torah, right? Kigach, this is Parashat Mishpatim, by the way. Kigach, shore, et ish, o et ishavamet. 
when you're going to, by the way, you should know the majority of all damagers, the majority of all damagers are going to be in Parashat Mishpatim. Majority. Right? And when I say majority, majority, meaning the majority of all Baba Kama, Baba Metziah, Baba Mata, you, like the majority is all in Parashat Mishpatim. Because mm -hmm. that was the Parashat to do with all these things of damages. Why? why? Because, right, certain Allah they will repeat it, but it's not in everything. Right? But now why? Because at the end of the day, right, when you're going to come and you're going to have, right, when you're going to come and you're going to have, right, the entire concept of right after the Ma'amad Sinai, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to teach you this is one of the most important things. Oh. What is that? What do you do to your friend? Or you call the damager. Sometimes people could damage and they don't even realize that they damage. Right? They think that they're doing a toba and they do a ra'ah. Right? He's going to come and he's going to say, listen, I dug you a pit. I did you a favor. But yeah, but the pit made me fall. Right? It was not that you made me a pit for, for drinking water. You made me fall. So therefore, people have to understand, right, the, the concept of damages. Okay? So now you come into this. When it says Kigach Shor Et Ish or Et Isha Vemet, and Negicha Ele Bekerem, whenever it uses the terminology Negicha, Negicha is always to horror to, um, I forgot the word in English, Lingoach uh, uh, is to gore. I think that's the word in English. Yes, to gore. Yeah, to, to, gore. Gore. to gore. So when you, whenever you use the terminology of goring, it has to be with the horns. Okay? So that's what he says over here. Kigach, and Negicha Ele Bekerem. Shneema Ben says in the Pasuk, Vayas Lo. Tzidkiyahu ben kena'ana karne barzel, horns of uh, iron. Vayom el ko'am an Hashem, this is what Hashem says, tenagach et aram, go and gore them. Ve'omen, and it says in the Pasuk also, v'chor shoro hadar lo, v'kane rehem kanav, bahem amimi nagach. These two Pesukim are bringing down the keren, the horns, and immediately tells you, yinagach, right? Or to do with the other Pasuk, right? Tenagach et aram. And it's talking about karne bazel, karnaim. So you see, when you're talking about the horns, which are karnaim or karne, right? Karne ba, karne rem, karnav. And then it tells you about yinagach or negicha. So obviously, whenever you use the terminology of negicha, it means with the horns. So says the Gimana, my man, why did I need two psukim? This is the Gimana does almost all the time, meaning 90% of the time. When I come and I want to prove to you something, if I have to bring you two different psukim, I come and ask, mm. why? Why was it enough with one? Meaning, if doing? I come and I have to bring you a proof, it's enough to bring me one proof. Why do you have to bring me two proofs? Why do you have to bring me two? You have a pasuk. Why do you have to come and bring me one proof? See, he says, my veil man. Now he says, I'm going to mm -hmm. say, maybe you cannot learn divre Torah from divre Nevi'im. This was a pasuk, right? When it says over here, Melachim Aleph. Melachim is Nevi'im, which is called divre Kabbalah. So therefore, why would I learn from divre Kabbalah to divre Torah. The truth is, right, and this Mordechai should tell you, right, you have a pasuk in Dvarim. You have a pasuk in Zohar Bracha. Right? Why in the world am I going to bring down a pasuk in, in, in Melachim? You have a pasuk in Dvarim. You have a pasuk in the Torah. Why am I bringing it somewhere else? So answers that Tashima comes to teach you, Bechor Shoro Adarlo. Right, what does that mean? That's why he teaches you, don't only bring it from Nevi'im, from divre Kabbalah, I have it from the Torah also. So the Gemara asks, the Hamelafu, right? So then one second. This Dirasha is a Limudin. So what does that mean? Divre Kabbalah. Gilu Minta Bearmahu, Tenegicha, Bekerenu. This is just a Gilu Minta. The Gilu Minta means it's coming to reveal to you something. And what's it coming to reveal? That Keren, right? Uh, sorry, the Negicha is Bekeren, right? That's just what it's revealing to you. Meaning it's just trying to teach you something, like to reveal to you something. It's not something that, that you have to learn from it. It's, it's it's something which is exposed. It's not that you need, you know, we just spoke about, you know, testimony or things like that. And then we said, it's a gili minta bi'alma. Gili minta bi'alma just means it's something that you're just exposing. It's not that it's coming that you're doing. So, Ela, but rather, I would have thought to say, Kipali grachmana, when the Torah made a differentiation, then tam le mu'ad. Right, what does that mean? Between a tam and a mu'ad. Right, what does that mean? He comes and he says like this. You have to remember that on Nizke Tam, right, there's going to be a difference between the Tam and the Muad, right? What is a Tam? Tam is a non habituous gore. A Muad is a habituous gore, meaning somebody that's doing it all the time, right? So he comes and he says, which one? Yes, three times and over. That's how he becomes a Muad. But basically, he's habituous. How do you make a habit? When you do things, when you start doing things a few times, that's when it becomes, yeah, when you start making a habit. So therefore, what happens? So he comes and he says, 
the Torah is teaching you that there's going to be yeah. Nizke Tam, he's going to teach you, he's going to pay Chetzi Nezek. And Nizke Muad, he's going to pay Nezek Shalem. Hanemile, when are these words? Meaning, why do you need two psukim? Two psukim is to teach you between the difference between a Tam and a Muad. Hanemile betlusha. Meaning, when the Shor is going to come and he's going to take with, let's say, right, um, a Keren, which is Tlusha, and then he's going to come and gore, right? And that was the case of Karnetz Kiyau ben Kna'ana, Shayu Tlushot, like this. The first case, which is Melachim, what happened? They went and they took the horns, but it was human being taking the horns, right? It wasn't the, the, the Shor, but it was human being taking, taking horns which were detached and using those horns to come and to gore another person, right? Or to gore... Right, the 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 yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, shh, right, listen carefully. So he comes and he says, Aval, however, though, if the horns are attached, I would say that the entire thing is going to be a muad, even on the first time around. Meaning, like this if I didn't have both psukim, I would have had a havamina. You know what a havamina is? An uh, ox comes and he gores. The first time that he gores, what happens? Half he has to pay half damages. Second time, half pay, yes, half damages. Third time in onwards becomes Nezek Shalem, full damages, Now, one second, says the Gimara, if I didn't have both Psukim, I would have thought that when the ox comes and he gores with his natural horns, even in the Pamani Shuna, even on the first time, he's called a Muad. When is he considered a Tam? If he takes with his teeth, a horn which is detached, he takes it like this, and he gores with that horn. Yeah, yeah. Why do I? How, why would I say that? What's the pasuk? The pasuk in Melachim said, "Sidkiyahu ben Kenana made karne barzel. He made horns of iron, uh, iron, and then he went and he was menageach etamim. Obviously, they were detached. A human being doesn't have go- horns growing on their heads, so it's detached. So that's what I would have thought. Avame mechuberet emakula muediti. Says the Gemara, Tash Shema, and that's why I need the second pasuk. Meaning the second pasuk in Devarim that I needed was to teach you, no, that really Bemet Negicha with a Keren Mechuberet is also called the Negicha. What's the proof? We're not about that the Re'em is going to come and take the Karnaim, which are detached, his own Karnaim. And with that, he's going to be in Negachet Kol Amin. Okay? Nekuda. So fine. So from here, we learn Nina Torah that Keren. Right is one of the of one of the categories of shor. Keren is one of the categories of shor, and it's from the Torah. Says the Gemara, Tolada de Keren Mahi. What is the Tolada of Keren? We have this the father category, the Av Keren, the horn. Maza Tolada. Answers the Gemara. Wait, Keren is not a Tolada of, of no, ox. No, no. Keren is ox. What is ox? I'm saying the ox is a father. What, what did the ox do? No, but there's three detached. different ways. There's three different ways. But they're not right? But it's not a tolada. So you have keren. Now, what is the tolada of keren? Says the Gemara. Number one, negifa. He pushes with his body. Number two, neshicha, biting. Number three, revitza. He's going to okay. There's a whole question. What is it? Exactly. He's going to jump. Yes, but all these things are toladot. Right? Ubeita, or kicking. Okay? So now one second. So the Gemara is going to say it. So one more time. These are toladot. So you had the av, right, which is keret, toladot. Says the Gemara, Maishna de negicha de kari le'av, tichtiv ki gach, negifa nami ktiv ki gof. One second, one second, one second. You just told me that you have an av of nezikin, which is called keren. Keren is shor. And if I'm going to ask you shor, what is shor? Keren. Right, Keren is the horns. You're going to come and you're going to gore. So says the Gemara, how do I go? What is bite with, with Keren? One minute. One minute. It's, it's biting with your teeth. No, no. And it's a tolada. Yeah, and you're kicking with your feet, not with your horn. Right? But one minute. Right? So now, says the Gemara. Right? Says the Gemara. Right? So he comes and he says this. He comes and he says, right? The, what is the reason why Negicha is called an Av Melacha? Because it says in Pasuk, Pasuk, Kigach, Negifa is also written in the Torah. You just told me Negifa, which is pushing with the body, right? A shove. I'm going to shove you. So the, the 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 ox comes and shoves somebody. That's called Keren. Why is that called Keren? That's a Tolada. I would say that that's an Av. And it comes from the Torah. What's the proof? You told me Kigach, 
Now it says ki gof, and the Torah is written ki gof. So nigifa should be mina Torah, and it should be an av. It shouldn't be a tolada. Answer so the the gemara. Hai nigifa, nigichai. Nigifa is nigicha. Meaning that's the translation. Meaning even though it changed the terminology, nigifa is nigicha. So when it says ki gof, it's talking about the karnav. We're not talking about that he pushed with his body, he shoved with his body. We're talking about with the karnayim. Uh, oh, that's another question. But that's the way it is. The tanyas we learned in a bright that we're almost done. Patach benigifa, v'siem benigifa, v'siem benigicha. The bright says, we started with nigifa, and we finish with nigicha. Lomar lecha to teach you, zoi nigifa v'zoi nigicha. This is the same thing. Right? That lashon nigifa, which is written in the Torah, and the lashon of nigicha is all the keren. Meaning, in the Torah, it's the same thing. That's the way it is in the Torah. So says the Gemara, Ma ishna gabe adam dikhtiv ki gach, u ma ishna gabe beema dikhtiv ki go. And this is, I think, what Mordechai is alluding to. At the end of the day, if it's the same thing and you're using the horns, why is it that when he's goring a human being, it's called ki gach? And when he's goring an animal, it's called ki gof. Why is it? What's the difference? Answer the Gemara, Adam vit le mazala. Adam has a mazal. And therefore it's written ki gach. Because the negicha is biratzon mugdam uvekoach tatsliach laziklo. A behema le le mazala. He doesn't have a mazal. And therefore since he doesn't have a mazal which is protecting him, ketiv ki gof, because even just pushing it on its own, it could, it could already damage. Which means like this. The mazal of a human being protects a human being. The mazal protects a human being. And therefore, if the mazal is down, he's down. He's, he's vulnerable. If his mazal is very strong, you cannot come up against it. The Gemara says to do with the rasha, that sometimes don't start off with the rasha. Why? Shasha mesachek et lo. What is that? Ah, very good. Sechem Megillah. What does that mean, shasha mesachek et lo? It means that his mazal is so strong, he'll be able to turn, take everyone down. Even if you have tzadikim, even if you have amal, he's got a strong mazal. The mazal is something very, very important. So here he comes and he says, a human being has a mazal. That mazal, by the way, we once gave him a shiur on Masech and Gilad, we said, it's actually the malach which watches over the human being. Right? That malach that he has, that watches over him, that's his mazal. So he comes and he says, right, that right now a human being has mazal. And since the human being has a mazal, it's written ki gach, because it means that he's doing it, he has to do it with a lot of kavana in order to be mazik. Because if he didn't have kavana to be mazik, it's impossible that he would be mizot. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't be damaged. But by an animal, zumazal. So automatically, even without you know real intentions, and the animal just comes, whoops, and boom, and instead of the other animal flying, it could be damaged mm-hmm. because there's nothing to protect it. And that's why it's written ki gof. It's like it's like a, it's like an igifa. It's like a push because ki knew that there's no protection protecting right the animal. Uminta gavor chekamashvan. It's come to teach you something new. Temual leadam avimual lebeima. Something incredible. You have an animal. And the animal gored once, twice, three times. It becomes a muad. I'm going to ask you a question. What happens if he gores three times an animal? Does he become a muad for a human being? Or the opposite? If he gores three times a human being, is he called a muad for an animal? Says the Gimara. By the way, we're going to teach you something new. What are we going to teach you? You have a mu'ad for a human being. It's called the mu'ad la'bema. That means the second he gores human beings, he's already a gore. Gamarno. For everybody. Even though he didn't even touch an animal once. It doesn't even, matter. If he goes once, and you mean? No, being? three yeah. times. Right? But the second that he's a mu'ad. The second he's a mu'ad for, for a human being, being he's a mu'ad. Right. What is a mu'ad? That's another David David. Right? But the second that he's a mu'ad for a human being, he's a mu'ad for animals. But... I don't say that the other way around. Amwad for a beima is not an amwad for an adam. Says the Gemara. Okay, let's go back now. Another one. So we had two different, we had a tolada and an av. Negifa was a tolada, pushing with the body. Okay, that's a tolada. Ah, I wanted to make it an av. This is written in the Torah. No, when it's written in the Torah, negifa, it's negicha. But just one's by a human being and one's by an animal. Next one, neshicha. Says the Gemara, not like what David said. The exact opposite. The Gemara says, I don't understand you. If Neshicha is biting with the teeth, you told me that there's three different things that are by an animal, by a shore. There's the horns, the teeth, right? And the feet. 
So therefore, neshicha should be a toledav shen. What's going on? <laughs> neshicha biting should be like the tolada of the eating. Meaning, right, if he's going to come and he's going to eat your produce, so that's shen. But if he's going to bite a human being or bite another animal, that should be a toledav shen. Not a toledav keren. Not a toledav goring. I just want to say Huh? I just want to say Oh, ah, okay. So that's what you said then. Very good. Right? That's what you said. So says the Gimara, no, it's incorrect. He says, why? Shen yeshana lazika. Ha en lo lazika. To be shen, you have to have hana. You have to benefit. Neshicha, you don't have benefit. What does that mean? When an animal comes and eats your produce, he's eating. He's benefiting. That's what's called shen. When he comes and he bites, he's not benefiting. Maybe he's getting out of Zatzabim, but it's not, it's not benefiting. It's not a true benefit. So therefore, it cannot be considered shen. It's considered keren. It's considered the one that's goring. It's like goring. And that's why it's toledal keren. It's not shen. Says the Gimana. Okay, fine. Next one. Revitao beita. Revitao beita should be a toledal regel. Regel is kicking, right? With a foot, right? Or we don't know what regel is until now, but, but it's a foot. So Rimono Shulam. Revitao beita. Beita for sure it's kicking. Revitao is that he falls upon it and just like, you know, tramples upon it. So Rimono Shulam. That should be a toledal regel. And so Gimana, no. Regel is a kamatsui. Regel is just walking. It's normal that when it's going to walk, it's going to damage. Honey and is a kamatsui, but here it's not as a kamatsui. It's not common. It's not common that it's going to come and he's going to trample upon something where he's going to come and he's going to not, not trample. It's a better word on it. That he like jumps upon it. It's a better word for it. I don't know what the word in English, but it's revitsa or beita, kicking. That's not that normal. Fine. So says the gimara, the kuda. Okay, so one more time. Because of that, that's why we said that, that Revitzam Bita is a Tolada of Keren and not a Tolada of Regel. Because Regel is common. Revitza and, uh, and Bita is not common. So then you put it back to the Goring, right? Which usually should not be common. Okay, fine. Nekuda. Let's go back. We asked the question and we didn't get an answer. The question was, is the Toledot of the Avot Nezikin like the Avot or not? Rav Papa comes and he says, Yesh Yesh. Some yes, some no. Says the Gemara, Toledot of Kayotze Ben Damar of Papa, Ahai. Which case is it that Toledot then is not Kayotze Ben? So, Ine Mahani, if you're going to tell me now that he's talking about the Toledot of Keren, that the Toledot of Keren are not like the Avot, Maishna Keren de Kavanato Lazikum Amalucha Ushmirato Alecha. One second, Keren, right? He has Kavanato to be Mazik. It's your money and you're obligated to watch it. Haninami, so to all these toledot, it has kavana to be mazik, it's your money, and you're obligated to watch it. So what's the difference? Meaning, if you're going to tell me that the toledah is not like the av, that's incorrect. Because all of these characteristics, whether it's biting, whether it's going to be, you know, like jumping upon it, whether it's going to be, it's they're all the same. It's your money, they have kavana to be mazik, and you're obligated to watch over it. I mean, it's your money, it's your ox. Yeah, it's your office, it's your money, it's your property, right? It's your it's your value. You you write it as an asset, it's yours. So says the Gimana, you're right. And the Toledat the Keren is Keren. The Toledat of Keren is like Keren. So that's the, the yesh that they're similar. That means the Tolada is like the Av. So when does the Papa say that the Toledat is not like the Av? The Shem the Regal. On the teeth and on the Regal. So says the Gimana, Shem the Regal Hechiktiva. Where's the written Shem the Regal in the Torah? Where's the written Shem Regal in the Torah? Keren, I found you in the Torah. I found it in Melachim and then in Devarim. Where did I find Shem Regal in the Torah? Says the Gemara, the time was learned in a Braita. Veshilach Beiro. Right? It says over here, Veshilach. Veshilach means that he sends Zer Regal. Meaning when he's sending forth his foot. And that's what it says in the Pasuk in Yeshaya, Meshalchei. Meaning that since it was using the same terminology of Shalach, Shalach, and there it says, Mishalchi regel ashor v'achamor, right? Ubiyel zu Hashem. So when it says biyel, that's eating, that's Hashem. Vechen hu omer, ka asher yivael, right? Agala la tumo. When he's going to come and he's going to um, be revealed, because again, that's talking about the Shem, where it was something which is mitgale, because sometimes it's megule, and sometimes megule, meaning the teeth, they're not megule. Sometimes they're megule, it depends on your, obviously your matzav ruach, right? Your, your, the way that you are, but, they're sometimes revealed, sometimes not revealed. So the teeth is something which is going to be kashiri va'er et galala tumor. You're going to come and you're going to 
Okay, this pasuk is obviously talking about Yerovam and everything else, but it's talking about that it's going to be revealed or not of the Galel we're going to speak about. So basically, this is what we're going to finish off by basically trying to find out where do we see such a concept of trying to find out where is Shen Varegel in the Torah to see that they're going to be considered Av Menachom.